The present story, The Snake and the Mirror, is written by Mr. Waikum Muhammad Bashir. Let us know more about him. Waikum Muhammad Bashir, 21st January 1908 to 5th July 1994, was a Malayalam fiction writer from the state of Kerala in India. He was a humanist, freedom fighter, novelist, and a short story writer. He is noted for his down-to-earth style of writing that made him equally popular among literary critics as well as the common man. He is regarded as one of the most successful and outstanding writers from India. Translations of his works into other languages have won him worldwide acclaim. The Story the Snake and the Mirror is an English translation of his story. His notable works include Balya Kala Sakshi, Sabdangal, Matilukal, and Anarga Nimisham. He was awarded the Padma Shri in 1982. He is fondly remembered as the Bepur Sultan. Let us now enter into the tale, The Snake and the Mirror. This story is the description of a doctor's experience when he encountered a snake. The doctor, who is a homeopath, asked his fellows, Have you ever had a full-blooded cobra coiled itself around any part of your body? The doctor had such a dreadful, terrible experience once, and started narrating his experience. Those were the days when I was practicing my medicine. It was a hot summer night about 10 o'clock. I returned to my room after having my meal in a restaurant. Suddenly, I heard some noise outside and opened the door to see what it was. There was nothing outside. As I had just started my medical practice, and my earnings were meager. I stayed in a small rented room which was not even electrified. Looking at my room, one could say that the rats and I were sharing the room. I had only 60 rupees in my suitcase, apart from a few shirts and dhotis. Beside all these, I also possessed a solitary black coat. I took out the box of matches and lit the kerosene lamp on the table. I took off my black coat, shirt and not so white vest and hung them on the wall. The room had a tiled roof with long supporting gables that rested on the beam over the wall. The rats used to run frequently over the beams. I made my bed, pulled it close to the wall and lied on the bed. As I couldn't sleep, I went out to the veranda for some fresh air but the air seemed to be on a time off. I returned to the room, sat on the chair in front of a mirror. I took out the book, The Materia Medica, from the box beneath the table. I started reading the book at the table on which the lamp, a big mirror and a comb were present. I was very tempted to look into the mirror just like the others. I was a great admirer of beauty and always believed that I looked handsome those days. As I was a bachelor and a doctor, I made sure that my presence was felt. I picked up the comb, ran it through my hair and adjusted the patting so that it was straight and neat. I heard the sound again from above but didn't pay much attention to it. I looked at my face close in the mirror and made an important decision that I would shave daily and grow a thin moustache so as to look more handsome. With that decision, a smile bloomed on my face. Then I made another lovely decision that I would carry that lovely smile on my face forever to look more handsome. The same noise came from above again. I stood up lit a beady and started walking up and down the room. All of a sudden, another lovely thought popped up in my mind. It was, 
I would get married to a woman doctor who had plenty of money and good medical practice. She must be fat. I applied a condition to the thought for a valid reason. If I made a silly mistake and had to run, she must not be thin enough to chase and catch me. With those thoughts in my mind, I came back to my chair which was in front of the mirror. There were no more noises from above. Suddenly, there came a dull thud-like sound as if a rubber tube fell on the ground. I was sure that there was nothing to worry about. Thought of turning around and taking a look at what fell from above. No sooner had I turned to take a look, I observed a fat snake wriggled over the back of the chair I was sitting on and landed on my shoulder. The landing of snake and I turned to take a look took place simultaneously. I neither jumped, trembled nor cried out. I had no time to do any such things. The snake slithered along my shoulder and coiled around my left arm above the elbow. The widespread hood of the snake was not more than three or four inches from my face. I sat there holding my breath. In fact, I was turned to stone, but my mind was very active. The room I was sitting in was very dark except for the light of the kerosene lamp. Then I realized the presence of God, the creator of this world and this universe. God was there. Suppose I said something and he didn't like it. I silently thanked the God in my heart and imagined writing the words, O oh God, in bright letters outside my little heart. My left arm started to pain. It was like a thick leaden rod, no, a rod of molten fire, was slowly but powerfully crushing my arm. The strength of my arm was getting drained. What could I do? Any slightest movement of mine would result in the strike of the snake. I felt like death lurked four inches away from me. Then a question popped up in my mind. What medicine should I take if it bites me? Unfortunately, I did not have any medicines in the room. That moment, I thought myself that I was a poor, foolish and stupid doctor. I smiled feebly at myself, forgetting that my life was at stake. It seemed as if God appreciated that. The snake turned its head, looked into the mirror and saw its reflection. The snake was looking into the mirror. Though it was not the first snake that had looked into a mirror, but it was confirmed that the snake was looking into the mirror. I felt it was admiring its own beauty. Was it trying to make an important decision about growing a moustache or using eyeshadow and mascara or wearing a vermilion spot on its forehead? I didn't know anything for certain. What sex was the snake? Was it a male or female? I would never know, for the snake unwound itself from my arm, slowly slithered into my lap, and then crept onto the table. Perhaps it wanted to enjoy its beauty from a closer view. I was turned into a man of flesh and blood from the granite image. Still, I stood silently holding my breath and quietly reached the veranda. From there, I leapt into the yard and ran for all I was worth. Everybody, listening to his story, heaved a sigh of relief. Then one of the persons asked, Doctor, is your wife fat? The doctor replied, No. The God had planned it otherwise. My wife is a thin, ready person blessed with the gift of a sprinter. Another person asked, Doctor, did the snake follow you? The doctor replied, I ran and ran till I reached my friend's house. I immediately smeared oil all over my body and took a bath. I changed into fresh clothes. The next morning, around 8.30, I went to my room along with my friend, along with a few others to pack my luggage and get shifted. Before we arrived there, some thief had removed almost all my belongings, 
but the thief had left one last thing as an insult. Another person asked anxiously, What was that? The doctor said, My dirty vest, that fellow had such a sense of cleanliness, he could have washed it with soap and water and used it. There came out another question. Doctor, did you see the snake the next day? The doctor replied, I hadn't seen it from then. It was a snake taken with its own beauty.